Marbles, the childhood toy of millions, are in fact created from millions of tons of industrial waste. Instead of being buried forever, sharp glass fragments and shattered bottles are collected and given a dramatic new life. Through a tightly controlled closed-loop industrial process, where heat, motion, and time are precisely regulated, these discarded materials gradually shed their waste identity and are transformed into perfectly round glass marbles. In this video, the factor and takes you behind the scenes of a modern glass marble manufacturing facility, revealing what truly happens inside the factory and tracing the full journey from industrial waste to a finished marble. Marbles are the clearest proof of rebirth. They are made from recycled glass, a unique material that can be regenerated endlessly without any loss in quality. Few would expect that behind these tiny spheres lies a quiet industrial empire, generating nearly $300 million in global revenue each year, with production concentrated primarily in China, India, Mexico, and several long-established factories in Europe and the United States. To sustain that flow, a large factory must melt around four tons of glass per day. From this process, billions of marbles are produced every year, reflecting the scale and operational intensity of a recycling industry running continuously across the globe. The journey of a single marble begins in what seems like piles of worthless waste. Glass water bottles, beer bottles, and food jars do not disappear after their useful life ends. Instead, they quietly enter an entirely new cycle of existence. In many countries, people return them to automated bottle return machines placed in supermarkets, gas stations, or residential areas. There, each bottle passes through scanning systems and optical sensors that identify its material, color, and suitability for recycling. In just a few seconds, the machine confirms whether the bottle is valid and refunds the user a small amount of money, encouraging responsible collection behavior. From these collection points, industrial trucks operate continuously, transporting thousands and sometimes tens of thousands of bottles per trip to recycling facilities. What once looked like ordinary trash now becomes a moving stream of raw material flowing steadily toward a new industrial life. As soon as the glass arrives at the factory, the cleaning line is activated immediately. Industrial vibrating conveyors begin to shake vigorously, knocking off soil, sand, and dust that cling to the surface of the bottles and jars. Next, workers carry out a direct visual inspection, quickly removing any remaining paper, labels, or plastic by hand. At the same time, high-power magnetic systems operate continuously, pulling out metal caps, and even the smallest fragments of metal still mixed in with the glass. This step is absolutely critical because even a tiny amount of metal entering the furnace can cause serious damage to the melting system. At this stage, the glass is required to reach an almost perfect level of cleanliness. The clarity, shine, and structural stability of the finished marbles cannot be achieved if the raw material still contains impurities. After being thoroughly cleaned, the glass is fed directly into industrial hammer crushers. Bottles and jars that were once intact drop into the crushing chamber, where they collide repeatedly with high-speed rotating steel hammers. In just a few seconds, they are completely shattered, turning into millions of sharp, glittering fragments known as cullet. Cullet is the ideal form of glass for recycling production lines. Because it has already been melted once before, Cullet melts much faster than raw materials and can reduce energy consumption during the melting process by up to about 40%. At this point, waste has officially transformed into industrial feedstock, ready to re-enter the manufacturing cycle. After crushing, the cullet is sent into an automated optical sorting system. The glass fragments fall onto high-speed conveyor belts and pass through arrays of laser sensors and industrial cameras. The system continuously scans each piece to identify its color and detect any unsuitable materials. Brown glass, green glass, and even contaminants such as ceramic are instantly recognized. Compressed air jets are then triggered, precisely blowing each fragment into a separate lane. This process runs non-stop at speeds of tens of thousands of pieces per minute, 
It ensures that the cullet is sorted by color with extreme accuracy, because even a slight mix of the wrong color can compromise the quality of the recycled glass. After sorting, the cullet is carried by feed conveyors and discharged into the industrial mixing system. Here, silica sand, soda ash, and limestone are precisely weighed and then fed into large industrial mixers. The mixing paddles rotate continuously, blending the materials evenly and ensuring that every piece of cullet is uniformly coated with the other components. The entire process takes place in a closed environment to prevent contamination and to maintain the stability of the batch. Depending on the type of marbles the factory intends to produce, clear, colored, solid, or lightweight, the proportions of each ingredient are carefully adjusted. Even a slight change in the mixture can affect the hardness, clarity, and forming behavior of the glass. At this stage, the final character of each marble is already being defined, long before the glass ever reaches the furnace. After mixing, the glass batch is continuously fed into large industrial furnaces. These systems operate 24 hours a day without any shutdown. Each batch of glass typically weighs about 88 pounds, and it is loaded into the furnace at regular intervals, on average once every 20 minutes. The temperature inside the furnace is constantly maintained at around 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, hotter than volcanic lava. Workers must wear fire-resistant suits and thick protective gloves because the heat in the surrounding area, approaching 3,000 degrees, is almost unbearable. Inside the furnace, the solid particles gradually soften, bond together, and transition into a fully molten glass state. The stream of molten material is held stable for several hours, allowing trapped gases to escape and ensuring a uniform composition. Throughout this process, technicians continuously monitor both temperature and flow rate, making sure the amount of glass entering the furnace is perfectly balanced with the amount of molten glass flowing out at the front end. This precise control creates the ideal conditions for the shaping stages that follow, where the molten glass will finally begin its transformation into perfectly formed marbles. At the base of the furnace, molten glass flows out through an orifice in a steady controlled stream. Gravity pulls the glowing liquid straight downward toward the cutting mechanism positioned directly below. Here, two mechanical blades move back and forth at extremely high speed, continuously lubricated to cleanly slice the molten stream into individual droplets. The size of each droplet is determined by the balance between the glass flow rate and the opening and closing speed of the cutting blades. Under standard operating conditions, this system produces about four marbles per second, equivalent to nearly 240 marbles per minute. Each droplet measures approximately 21 thirtieths of an inch in diameter. Immediately after being cut, the red-hot droplets are propelled into two guide tubes, which channel them downward into rotating spiral-forming shafts below, where the shaping process begins. Immediately after leaving the cutting unit, the hot glass droplets are guided into a system of continuously rotating spiral shafts. These shafts are precisely synchronized in both speed and spacing, forcing each droplet to roll and spin constantly as it moves along the line. Under the combined effect of gravity and rotational motion, the softened glass redistributes evenly in all directions and gradually forms into a perfect sphere. This continuous rotation prevents flat surfaces from forming while the glass is still soft. It also keeps the marbles separated from one another, avoiding collisions and preventing them from sticking to the shaft surfaces. The spiral shafts are approximately five feet long, providing enough time for the glass to cool stabilize and lock in its spherical shape. The spacing between the shafts is adjusted with high precision to control the final size of each marble. Thanks to this exact mechanical balance, the production line can operate non-stop, achieving an output that exceeds 1 million marbles per day. Coloring and pattern creation are then carried out while the glass is still hot and highly formable. Metal oxides are introduced directly into the furnace or fed through special ports near the orifice, where the molten glass flows in a steady stream. At this point, skilled operators control both the position and the amount of colored glass being added, allowing it to melt and form distinct color streams inside the base glass. 
For special product lines, artisans can intervene directly in the rolling shaft area. Fine glass frit is sprinkled onto the moving marbles, or heated colored glass rods, known as glass canes, are carefully touched to the molten stream to create effects such as cat's eye patterns or swirling streaks. Because the colors do not fully blend together, each marble develops its own unique pattern, making no two marbles ever exactly the same. After leaving the forming rollers, the marbles are still extremely hot. They are guided through a chute and drop directly into 65-gallon steel drums, thick enough to withstand high temperatures and maintain the stability of the glass structure. Inside these drums, the marbles are left undisturbed and allowed to cool naturally for about 24 hours, giving the heat time to escape slowly and preventing thermal shock within the material. In some cases, operators intentionally spray water directly onto the rollers as the marbles are being formed. This thin layer of water rapidly cools the surface, temporarily locking in the shape while the glass is still hot and pliable. Immediately after that, the marbles are sent down into the steel drums to complete the cooling process. Once the marbles have cooled sufficiently and reached the required level of stability, workers unload them into wheelbarrows and transport them directly to the staging area for packaging. There, each batch is shoveled and poured straight into pre-positioned sacks with movements that are fast and decisive, yet always carefully controlled. Each sack is then placed on a scale to check its weight. Workers immediately adjust the quantity of marbles until it meets the specified standard. Once the correct weight is reached, the mouth of the sack is straightened and fed into a sewing machine, which stitches it closed securely to prevent any shifting during transportation. The finished sacks are then stacked neatly in the warehouse, arranged in orderly rows and ready for shipment. Some factories also package marbles into cardboard boxes or mesh bags to meet different distribution and market requirements. Alongside fully automated machinery, marbles with special patterns are still crafted entirely by hand by skilled artisans. After the glass has been completely melted in the furnace, the artisan uses a long metal rod and dips it directly into the molten mass to gather a controlled amount of glass. At this moment, the glass glows a bright orange due to its extreme temperature. The artisan allows it to cool slightly for a few seconds, then dips it back into the furnace to coat it with another layer of molten glass. This process is repeated several times to increase both the size and the structural stability of the piece. Once the desired amount of glass has been built up, the molten mass is rolled evenly on a flat metal surface. This motion rounds and balances the shape, forming the basic core of the marble. While the glass core is still hot and pliable, the artisan begins creating the internal patterns. Colored glass rods or small glass fragments containing glitter are prepared in advance on a metal plate that has been heated to a molten state. The glass core is rolled directly over these materials, allowing the colors and decorative elements to adhere to its surface. The entire piece is then returned to the furnace so the colored layers can melt and fuse completely with the core. After that, the artisan applies an additional outer layer of clear glass, sealing the patterns inside and locking the design permanently within the glass body. The patterned glass mass is attached to a round, disc-like tool at the end of a metal rod. The artisan then slowly and steadily pulls the glass out to a length of about 197 inches. During this stretching process, the internal patterns are elongated along the length of the glass forming a thin glass rod with the design running continuously through its core. The glass rod is placed onto a wooden surface, where the temperature drops rapidly and the material begins to harden. After a few minutes, once it becomes rigid enough, the artisan uses pliers to break it into short segments. Each segment contains a complete portion of the original pattern, ready to be used as a decorative element inside individual marbles. After being cut, the glass segments are reheated using a direct flame. The artisan wears protective goggles and focuses the heat on the pattern section because the colored glass has a higher melting point than clear glass. When the glass reaches the right level of softness, the artisan gently twists the segment by hand. 
This cycle of heating and twisting is repeated several times to precisely control the internal shape of the pattern, creating the characteristic swirling lines that directly define the final design of each marble. After the pattern has been fully twisted and formed, the glass segment is placed into a mold to shape it into a sphere. The stem connecting it to the glass rod is reheated and cut off with pliers, after which the surface is given a final heating so it can naturally round itself. The marble is then transferred into an annealing furnace, where it cools slowly over several hours. This annealing process releases internal stress within the glass, ensuring the marble does not crack and achieves the strength and durability required before final finishing. Marbles are not created by luck. They are the result of an industrial system operating with near-perfect precision. Temperature is kept stable, speed is calculated in advance, and every movement is repeated millions of times without deviation. The production line runs continuously, without pause, and only when every single link moves in perfect synchronization can glass become a finished product that is uniform, reliable, and consistent. If you want to continue exploring other factories and better understand how the world truly operates behind the scenes, follow the factory so you don't miss the journeys ahead.